right, now I'm going to take your AP diameter. I'm just going to note that you are, it takes two of you this width to make one of you this width. And it does. So good. AP diameter is two to one. Now we're ready to move on to your breast exam. I'm just going to have you rest with your arms at your side. And I'm going to palpate some lymph nodes. Are you ticklish? No. Okay. Just relax your arm. I'm going to note the central lymph nodes, the lateral lymph nodes, posterior, and anterior. And no lymph nodes are palpable. I'm going to have you make the same motions that I do arms above head. Good. Arms on hips. And lean forward. And through that process, I found that there was no dimpling, retraction, um, and that the breasts moved symmetrically together. Now I'm going to have you lay down. Good. And can you place one arm above your head? And I'm just going to complete your breast exam. Now I'm going to uncover the breast that I'm working with. And starting in the telespins, um, and working my way down in a rotary motion. I perfect for any nodules, and if I found any, I would list them um, in a clock formation and distance from the nipple. I'm going to palpate the nipple in the area on the last. And when I finish this breast exam, I will move on to the second breast and cover the one that I was finished working with. Up. You had any trouble with your breast lately? No. And no discharge upon expression of the nipple either. You place your arm back down. I'm just going to slide this pillow underneath your head for you. Comfortable? Mm -hmm. Alright, now I'm going to move on to your um, cardiac exam. And I'm going to start by auscultating for carotid bruise. I just need you to turn your head that way for me. Good. So I'm going to palpate for the carotid pulse and know that it's um, regular rate and rhythm. Sitting with the bell. And turn to the other side, please. Regular rating with them on this side as well. And no bruise, no bruise. Good. All right. Um, all right, I'm going to find the supercilial notch and the angle of Louis in the second intercostal space so that I can palpate the aortic pulse or the aortic um, cardiac area. Same thing, going to the left side along the sternal border, find the pulmonic. Down one intercostal space is the second pulmonic. Between the fourth or fifth intercostal space is the tricuspid. And then going microvicular at the fifth intercostal space, find the apical pulse. And the apical pulse. And then on my way back up, I'm going to use the veil, microvicular line. Going back to the sternal border, fourth or fifth of the tricuspid, second pulmonic. First pulmonic. And aortic. Good. Now I'm going to fill your pulses. So I'm just going to start with your temporal pulses. Regular rate rhythm noted on both sides. We've already done a carotid, so we're going to way on down to the brachial. And the radial. And regular rate and rhythm. And I would have her palpate her femoral. And work my way on down to the dorsal. And regular rate and rhythm on both sides here as well, which means that there should be pulses of the posterior tibia. So we've completed your cardiac exam. We're going to move on to your abdomen. Did you listen to the aorta as part of the cardiac? Mm -hmm. I think so. I'm going to um, listen to your abdomen for a couple different breweries. No aortic breweries noted. Or renal breweries noted. And I'm going to listen to the four products of your back. Noting that her stomach is flat in contour and the skin is just slightly lighter than the rest of the body, which is normal. And bowel cells are present and re pre normal reactive in all four quadrants. Alright, that completes your abdominal assessment with the exception of um, palpation. Do you all palpate? Did 
do light palpation. Then I'll, okay. Let me know if there's any tenderness. Your stomach is soft and non distended. And if I were going to palpate for the liver, um, on your right side, I would slide my hand up under me. And, either, and I would push up, have you take a deep breath, and palpate with deep palpation, trying to percuss, or trying to palpate the liver. And if I could palpate anything more than the border, your head would have liver enlargement. On the right lateral side of the body, I'll do the same thing with the spleen, or if you take a deep breath, and palpate for the liver as well. Okay. That completes your abdominal assessment. Let's move on to range of motion. So I'm going to have you go ahead and stand up with me. Oh, I'll let. Lay down. Mm -hmm. Lower extremities first. All right, I'm going to do range of motion on your hip. So you just let me know if there's any discomfort. So she's an extension, and flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, good, and circumduction. All right, now I need you to push up against me. Good, and push down against me. Good, and I'll test this in both sides to assess for symmetry and for equal strength. Now it's to the strength of your upper extremities. Can you flex your arms for me? Pull against me. Good. And push against me. Good. All right. Now we'll stand you up. And she's got her foot grips on. And let's do your deep tendon reflexes. Can I see your arm? And relax. And I would find her tendon on her tricep. And palpate. Brent and percuss. And then to the bicep and find the tendon, putting my finger to stimulate a reflex. Moving on down to the brachial radialis to stimulate a response. Relax your hand for me. There you go. Adding that tendon, I would find a response. Moving on down to the patella or the knee reflex. Relax your legs for me. Good. And to the Achilles. And then I would herbalize how to do Babinski, starting at the heel, moving from the fifth toe to the greater toe, and no fanning noted. If there were fanning, it would be an abnormal response. All right, we are going to assess your um, muscles and your exercises, and we're going to also look at your spine. So go ahead and stand up with me. All right, I'm going to need you to take just a couple steps forward for me. And I'm going to look at her spine and her sway of her arms and her gait. And turn around and follow me back and do heel to toe, please. You know that she's got a good balance with her tandem walk. <laughs> sort of. All right, now turn around for me. I'm going to find that her shoulders are symmetrical and even. Her scapula are symmetrical and even. Her hips are even. And or her iliac crest and her gluteal folds are even. And I'm going to have you bend over at the waist. This is flexion of the spine. Any tenderness on your spine? No. And spine is midline, no deviation. Okay, stand back up for me. Good. Now, let's turn around and look at me, please. I'm going to have you lean backwards. It's hyperextension of the spine and back up and to the side. Lateral flexion of the spine and extension and lateral flexion. Now, I'm going to hold you at the hips and I want you to turn at your waist, please. Rotation of the spine. Good. All right, now we're going to do range of motion at the upper extremities. And we're going to do your shoulder today, but typically we'll do all of them. So extension and flexion and extension. Good. Any pain? Oh. Hyperextension, extension, abduction, adduction, external rotation, internal rotation, and circumduction. 